Of all the things in this world you could have 105 trillion of, digits of pi is on very few people's lists. Honestly, it's pretty useless. Even NASA famously only cares about pi up to about 15 decimal places. But the quest to unravel this infinitely long number just hit a new milestone. It's been calculated to a record 105 trillion decimal places. It highlights the very thing that makes humanity so unique, and I'm going to explain why. Pi as a number is a universal constant. It, it pervades all of the cosmos. And so I suppose that there's some mystical awe about pi and uh, how fast you can uh, compute these digits. Getting pi just right is a bit like getting a pie just right. Imagine you're teaching a robot how to bake. How big of a pie crust do you need for this pan? Well, math can help here. The diameter across the top of the pan is about 10 inches. So the circumference of the circle, how big a pie crust you need, is the diameter times pi, 3.14. That'll give us a perfectly sized pie crust. Although maybe you want it a little bigger so that you have some overhang. But if we were sloppily imprecise with our pie, if we said, forget the decimals, I'm tired. Pi is just three today. Our robot baker would end up with far too little crust. And that pie would be very unsatisfying. But let's really spell this out. Like, what the hell is pi anyway? Well, it's actually really simple. So pi is just the relationship between how wide a circle is and how long it is around its edge. The circumference, the perimeter of any circle is 3.14 times bigger than its diameter. So this circle I know is exactly one foot across. The circumference, I can tell you without even measuring it, it's gonna be pi feet long, 3.14 feet. But I'll prove it to you by unrolling the circle. And we can actually measure it. From end to end, it is 3.14 feet, 957 millimeters. So imagine at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where they use pi all the time, they're not rounding to three, or even 3.14. I mean, 3.14 is a very poor approximation for pi, and if you were planning to send, let's say, a rocket from here to the moon, you would be really off if you use 3.14. <laughs> for their biggest interplanetary calculations, they use 15 decimal places, because that's good enough. And we can use Earth to show you why. The Earth's diameter across the equator is around 12,700 kilometers. If we calculated the circumference using pi at a mere 15 decimal places instead of its true, much longer value, we'd only be off by about a molecule. Like I said, good enough. But there's no end to how precisely we can calculate pi. So, you know, a number like one third, for example, we know that that's in decimal form 0 0.333 and, you know, it goes on. One thirty seventh. That's a little more complicated, but we also know it repeats, right? 0 0.027, 0 0.027, 0 0.027, and you get the idea. But pi, pi, is special because that number does also go on forever, but its digits, its decimal places, never repeat. So when a data storage company announced that it had smashed the old world record, calculating pi to 105 trillion digits, it was never trying to figure out how deep the rabbit hole goes. It was figuring out what the rabbit hole looks like when you're deeper than you've ever been before. What's interesting about calculating pi so exactly is that these days it's not just about raw computational power, it's actually about hard drive space. So it took basically a supercomputer 75 days to crunch the number, but what they ended up with was a petabyte of data. That's a million gigabytes. I mean, just, just look at this. I mean, these are the digits of pi. On this screen, you see about 15,000 of them. This text file has a billion digits in it, but I can't even fully open it because my browser keeps crashing 
either I get a, a status breakpoint or an out of memory error message. So imagine what kind of computer you need to crank out a text file that's a hundred thousand times longer than this. It's very difficult to wrap one's head around these humongous numbers when they, because we really don't even know, um, you know, the number. So we may say 10 followed by what, I don't know, um, 25 zeros or something like that. But yes, uh, the human mind is, has difficulty grasping the infinity of numbers. I mean, it's probably more than the number of sand particles in the Sahara Desert. Okay, so let's say I'm writing out all of the digits to pi. And I'm writing pretty small because I want to try to fit it all on one line all the way down this wall. With all of the digits that we now know, how many of these walls would we need? Not one, not two, not 10, not even 100. We'd need 400 million kilometers of wall, which is basically from Earth to Mars twice. So why do such insane math? If there's no earthly application of pi past a handful of decimal places, like, what's the point? Well, three reasons. One, calculating pi as precisely as possible has for a long time been used as a kind of benchmark for testing programs, new ways to store data, high precision math, optimizing algorithms. It makes for better hardware, better software. And that in turn affects everything from weather forecasting to DNA sequencing. Two. It really is like Alice in Wonderland. I think there are lots of things about pi we don't know. There are questions in number theory, which is my specialty, um, about how these digits distribute themselves and if there's a certain pattern to these digits. So all of this is an opportunity to geek out, right? I mean, it's, it's mathematically kind of cool to know that the 105 trillionth digit of pi is six. But are there as many sixes as there are fours in pi? For example, how even is the distribution? Or how often do we get kind of cool things that happen, like right here where you have three ones in a row? But the third reason humans can't stop calculating pi to further and further extremes is the same reason Joey Chestnut ate 72 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Nobody needs to eat that many. But it's a thing because we make it a thing, because it's measurable, because it's a challenge. 7577896091. And ultimately, the question humans never seem to stop asking, if we can do something, why wouldn't we?